After we give a talk on string theory, there's always somebody giggling in the back. There's always somebody, a cynic, who's just shaking his head, and then he has the courage to raise his hand and says, Professor, all this is hogwash. Einstein would say that a black hole is an extremely dense object, so dense that it begins to warp the fabric of space and time into a funnel. And in and some in fact, sense, that criticism has some validity. This is a theory of creation. It's a theory of the Big Bang itself. Therefore, to test the theory rigorously, we have to recreate the Big Bang, which is not possible. At the present time, on Earth, no one is smart enough to solve this theory. Nobody on Earth can solve the equations that I and my colleagues have written down. However, when someone does solve this theory completely, we should find our universe as one of the solutions of this theory. So once we've solved the theory by pure thought, we should be able to compare it with the subatomic particles we see in nature, and the game is over. At that point, it's finished. So what if you find this equation? Are we going to get better color TV? Are we going to get better sliced bread? Are we going to get a better a microwave reception just because you have this fantastic unified field theory? And the answer is no. However, I do believe that one day the destiny of all intelligent life in the universe will hinge on this equation. Trillions of years from now, we physicists believe that the universe will end not in fire, but in ice. My thinking is, when we reach the end of the universe itself, we'll simply take the unified field theory and create a lifeboat. We'll create a bubble, a baby universe on our dying universe. And just like a lifeboat, we'll leave the mothership to go to perhaps another universe, a warmer, younger universe. So in some sense, perhaps the unified field theory may be the salvation for all intelligent life in the universe which does not have to die when the universe dies. Sometimes late at night, when I'm all by myself, thinking that here we are on the threshold of the greatest breakthrough of all time, the creation of a theory of the universe, I say to myself, well, maybe it's all wrong. I mean, maybe we physicists don't know what the hell we're talking about. The string theory may be a theory of nothing rather than a theory of everything. That's the rub. String theory has no arbitrary parameters you can play with. You can't tweak it, you can't modify it. Therefore, if you solve it, either it's the entire universe or it's nothing at all. When I write symbols and letters on the blackboard and I play with them in my head, I ask myself a question that Einstein asked himself in the morning. If I'm going to create a universe, if I am God, how would I create this universe? And then I start to play with certain equations, and then I begin to realize they're ugly. And I say to myself, well, if I'm God, I don't want to live in a universe like this. And I scratch this out, and I say, no, no, it can't be right. It's too awkward. It's too clumsy. That's not the way I would create a universe if I'm God. The nature of existence, the nature of reality, the secret of the universe should be expressed in an equation one inch long, and I want to find it. Yeah.